All right, here we go again. Our first project after break 19, we'll call it. Hope everyone is doing fine and staying positive. This project took place at the Ivy Crossing in Fairfield near Travis Air Force Base. This is a new development. Most of these backyards are pretty small. That being said, it's really hard to work back here as well. One thing about track homes is that they're pretty much ready for base rock and set forms. We use 2x4s to set our forms. Here we also take some dirt from the side to fill in for the back patio to establish our grade. Pulling a string line here also helps us establish our grade. On these track homes, we use the existing concrete coming off the back door. The patio is about 40 feet long by 7 feet. We like to leave a foot or so off the fence for plants, but more importantly in case they have to replace the fence in the future. Once our string line is pulled, we double check it with our level in a couple of spots, match it with the red line on the house that was established off of the concrete by the back door. From one side from the house to the edge of the patio is about a 1% drop. So now that we established our grade, we're starting to frame for the new step as well as the outside patio. We added about three yards of base rock, as you can see here, and we're starting to spread it around. You can think of base rock as a sub four for concrete. The stakes we use to hold the two by four are two foot stakes spaced at about 18 to 24 inches on center. We have the steps, the step actually is only one step framed in and it steps down about six inches onto the patio. We like to run a little bit of base rock on top of the dirt. Sometimes, if you run the compactor with water first, it'd be a mud pack on the bottom of the compactor, which ends up being a big old mess. Now that we added some more base rock, we wet it down. So on this day, it had to be about 95 degrees. I had to take it back to when I was little in the 80s and drink some water straight from the water hose the old school way. Alright, so now that we got the base rock compacted, it's time for some rebar. On this patio, we use number three rebar. On most patios or walkways, we'll use a number three rebar or wire mesh. When it comes to driveways, we'll either use a number four or number five rebar. And for driveways, we space our rebar 12 inches on center. On walkways and patios, we go about 16 to 18 inches on center. We got this little Makita rebar cordless cutter in our inventory, which helps us cut horizontal bars. Normally we'll use this when we have to cut rebar on retaining walls or stem walls. But it also helps on small projects like this. This little beast can cut up to number six rebar. It allows us to cut two number threes at a time to speed up production. Once we get our cuts all taken care of, we then place them down. Again, we place our rebar about 16 to 18 inches on center for patios. We use a rebar tying gun to make all ties, and this also speeds up production time.
All right, so it's time for some concrete. First, we got to take care of a couple of minor details like covering up this drain with some tape, which is super important. Then we have to level out this sewer box for the clean out, also super important. So now that the concrete has arrived in a brand new truck, a little late on a hot day. Rule number one, if you're ordering concrete and you schedule for a certain time, always add 30 minutes. Of course, time is ticking with the concrete pump guy, always 30 minutes ahead of time. In all seriousness, both suppliers always take care of us and offer A1 customer service. So now that we got the concrete going, you can see what I mean by working in a tight space. We either have too many guys in a small area or not enough guys in the area. Or we're going to get the job done one way or the other. When pouring concrete, you want to make sure that you pull up the rebar. What you don't want is that rebar sitting on the bottom of the concrete. It does no good there. Alright, so here we're gonna let the video ride out a little bit for you to enjoy. So here's a perfect example of working in a tight space and not having enough manpower to work in this space. We got my guy working here with the bull float with one hand, doing a good job, keeping his balance with the other hand on top of the fence. So at this point, we have to start working the concrete to get it ready for a broom finish. Again, by it being a tight place to work, a lot of the work has to be done on slides or as I call them, skates. Here we're using a concrete hand trowel and a groover to open up the expansion joints, sometimes called deep joints. I'll let the video ride out from here and at the end you will see how we go about doing a broom finish. Thank you. 
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel to stay updated on our latest projects. Also be sure to like and leave any comments below. If you're in the Bay Area or Sacramento area, please hit the link below to schedule an appointment. Appreciate your time. See you on the next one.